You know, I drove through Joshua Tree National Park back in the 90s. This is why we love to travel in the United States, because there's so many oh. things like this. Okay, don't touch. We're Michael and Holoff, world travelers, <laughs> avid scuba divers, and food lovers. <laughs> We quit our jobs in 2019 to travel the world full time. Mission success. Unfortunately, in 2020, we had to fly back home to the States due to the COVID pandemic. So, we bought a camper van, adopted a sweet German Shepherd named Kana, and now the three of us continue on with our full time travel around North America in our home on wheels. Previously, we explored iconic Salvation Mountain in Southern California, as well as nearby Slab City, the last free place on Earth. I didn't stay in Slab City because when I drove through it, it looked like Mogadishu. What you doing? I gotta sort our salads so we can eat them by expiry date. February 28th, February 28th, we got a lot to eat. Look here. This is what happened if we run into like salad sale. February 27th. A dollar forty-nine. Yeah, I'm gonna eat this one. This is mine. All right, I'm gonna eat it for myself. Well, that's our salad story from outside Joshua one, two, Tree. Three. Hey, Kana. Kana, you want a chick rub? Chick this rub? No, good girl. Boy, twenty-eight. Our first stop today is the Bizarre Integatron. and according to the plaque, it's based on the design of Moses Tabernacle the writings of Nikola Tesla, and telepathic direction from extraterrestrials. And we'll leave that right there. It's not the largest thing, but this is a roadside attraction. So Halif always takes me to some unusual places, and this is one of them. This place is called Giant Rock, not too far from Joshua Tree National Park. And in the 1930s, a guy named Frank Kritzer came here and he used dynamite to sort of dig out a home underneath the rock on the north side. Apparently it never got like colder than 55 degrees and not hotter than 80 degrees in there. Anyway, it turns out that this guy was supposedly being investigated and well, I don't know if he committed suicide or if it was an accident, but there, it was a self-detonated dynamite explosion underneath the rock and that's how he perished. So you can see all around here, People have spray painted a lot of stuff. There's a lot of trash here, so people don't clean up after themselves. But this is apparently the largest freestanding boulder in the United States and probably the largest freestanding boulder in the world. 25,000 tons and seven stories high. And it's cracked and it's broken. People drew eyes on that thing. In the past couple of days, we've seen so many different art installations, kind of like really, I guess like a hippies kind of art <laughs> in the middle of the desert. And this is part of the borough land management site. Unfortunately, it's very destroyed. There's so many trash and graffiti. It's too bad, should be taken care of. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, the giant rock. And of course, in the 1950s, the UFO people started coming here, so. They're gonna wait for a saucer to land on the giant rock. <laughs> Ooh. You know, they used to hold concerts out here a lot, and that's the origin of the term rock concert. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Whatever. It was on Wikipedia, I swear. Was it really? Yes. No way. Okay. Olive is the most gullible person in the world. So it's not true? No, it's not. It's a really bad road. Yeah, Olive has taken me to a place where we always seem to have to play how much damage can we do to the van, or potentially do to the van. Seems like some kind of dust storm coming in. We may get sandblasted up here. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's pretty serious looking. Yeah, but as you get closer to it, it's not so bad. Like we're sort of in it now, I guess. I think we're in it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not so bad. The sky is surely clearing up. Our next destination is somewhere that has been at the top of our bucket list for a long time. Joshua Tree National Park. First glance does not disappoint. We were immediately greeted by thousands and thousands of these amazing boulder formations all around us. Look at these rocks. And these. 
and of course, the famous Skull Rock. Is that it? Yep. Doesn't look like a skull. It does. Just coming into the park itself is a completely different experience. The boulders that you see everywhere, the trees that you see everywhere, the varying landscapes everywhere, and hopefully soon a bighorn sheep that I might see. It makes it totally worth the admission charge. Right now I'm heading into a place called Queen's Mine. I know the mines are closed because of some problems, but it's part of the history of this place. I'm standing inside of some sort of stone structure here. It looks like it might have been an old cabin. This is what looks like to be the mines down there. And if you want an explanation of it, it was right there. You might notice that Holof is not with me right now. And that's because in many, though not all, national parks, dogs aren't allowed on trails. And not only that, but it's also illegal even if it's nice and cool out, to leave them in your vehicle. So, Holof is taking Kana for a walk out on one of the main roads where you're allowed to have dogs. And I get to do this wonderful hike. It's one of the trade-offs you make when you have a dog, but it's worth it. She's been great, so we don't mind making those trade-offs every now and then. And if Holof wants to come in here a little bit later, he can. And I'll take care of Kana. Should have brought my binoculars with me. There's possibility that there's some big horned sheep on the cliff over there, but I can't see them because I can't see that far away. Just found this wheel of some sort out here on the mine trail. I have no idea what it is. It looks like it could be a winch. Maybe it brings buckets up from the mine or something. If any of you guys know, put it in the comments. I'd love to know what it is. Oh, okay. Don't touch. Lots of interesting plants along the trail. It's a new cactus. I believe this is a soap bush yucca, and their cousins over here, well that one's not, I believe this one, oh no, this one here. This one here is a Mojave yucca. I was telling Holloth the other day that this is some of my favorite types of landscape to trek around and hike on because it's not native to me. It's one of these places where you can just look under everything, in and around the nooks and crannies, there's holes in the ground, and it's not damp and soggy like the places that I'm used to. I just love this, and I know that in places where dogs can go, Kana loves it too. So she would love this, but unfortunately she can't come in. You see stuff like this everywhere too. Cans, really super rusted, and you wonder if they're from like the 1800s or maybe something from the 60s and 70s and 80s or even later from people that came in and threw it on the ground. I never move these things. I figure if the rangers want them moved, they will do it. It could be part of the history of the park, or it could be just trash. Did we mention how amazing these rock formations were? It's definitely a very enjoyable drive throughout the National Park. There's something about landscape in the West, particularly like national parks. It's just so... Awesome. Yeah, it's just so unique. Every single one of them are different. Really enjoy driving around and I think it is larger than I thought. Like this stuff right ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay to do it? Hello! All right, we need a botanist. But I think that the way these things get their trunks, they start out all looking like this. And then as they grow up, the leaves kind of turn down and fold in and twist around until eventually you get a solid trunk. And it grows up more and the leaves fold down, twist around, get more solid trunk. Sometimes the leaves come out this way and they twist down and you'll get another branch off the tree. But like I said, I'm not a botanist. So if there's a botanist in the audience, that knows about the Joshua tree, let me know. Tell me I'm right. As always, we found an amazing campsite at Chiriaco Summit, home of the General Patton Memorial Museum, to commemorate the Desert Training Center. We are surrounded by their tank collection. And that's it from Chiriaco Summit Campground just outside of Joshua Tree National Park. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. If you want to subscribe to our channel and see our journeys all over North America, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications every time we post something new, click the bell. Thanks for watching. Uh... <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Kana. <laughs> Go see Michael.
Palm Springs, San Andreas Fault. San Andreas must have been a troublemaker. Yeah. Who did that? Oh, San Andreas Fault. It's Paul. 